Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Phil Harris Alice Bay Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist, here to welcome you for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have chosen to make the word Rexall part of our own store names. We've done that because we believe in the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. And we've put the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows to let you know we recommend and sell them. Bismarex is a good example of the quality of these products. This famous Rexall antacid often brings relief from acid indigestion within five minutes. Neutralizing excess acidity, leaving a soothing, protective covering on irritated stomach membranes. Quality like that of Bismarex is what we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Bill Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. Today is a big day in the Harris household. It's the master's birthday. Phil has just come downstairs, and Alice and the children and William are congratulating Happy birthday, Daddy. Daddy. Many happy returns. Happy birthday, Philip. Happy. Happy. What's happy about being a year older? You realize that today the mantle of youth has slipped from my shoulders and is being replaced by the yoke of senility? (laughs) What are you talking about? Today I'm 30. (laughs) Come again, Wonga. (laughs) How old are you? Thirty But Daddy, how can you be thirty? Last year, Mommy said that you were... Phyllis, Phyllis, don't question your father If he says he's thirty, he's thirty You mustn't get him excited Why not? Because it's not good for a man of (laughs) forty-one Now look, Phil, there's no shame in getting older I'm getting older and I admit it Why don't you? All right, I'll admit it You're getting older Present for me, kids. Gee. Oh, that's awfully sweet of you buying me this. This. Wait a minute. I don't think this is funny, Alice, and it's not nice to let the children ridicule their father by buying him something like this. What are you talking about? This is something you always wanted. It's a powder horn to hang up in your den with your antique gun. No. Oh. I thought it was an ear trumpet. <laughs> I'm sorry, kid. Thank you very much. Well, here's my present, honey. Happy birthday. Gee, another powder horn. No, no, this is an ear trumpet. <laughs> Stop, kid. <laughs> Next year I'll need it, though. You know something? I've always wanted a pair of these powder horns. They're going to look swell in my den. I have a present for you, too, Philip. And here it is. Wow, what a big box, Now, 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 you'd better let me open it. The present is breakable. Well, all right, all right, but hurry up, Willie. Come on, Willie. Tighten me up. I have to exert a little more strength. Ah, look at that boy's muscles ripple as he tries to tear that wrapping paper. (laughs) Here, let me at that thing, will you? Alice, wait till you see what I got, Philip. It's a modernistic piece of statuary. A statue for Phil? Oh, no. Ah, there. Well, I got it open. Now to get it to present. Get this junk out of here first. Tissue paper. Excelsior. This big white blob. More Excelsior. Tissue paper. The box is empty. Willie, where's my present? The big white blob is your present. (laughs) (laughs) Like it, don't you? What? You like it. 
Heavens, yeah. <laughs> Gee, a man's a fool to be without one of these. <laughs> I'll wear it always. You don't wear it. Oh, oh. Alice, how do you like it? Oh, Willie, this is really something. Isn't it? <laughs> Philip, this is a modernistic statue, and it's all for you. Why, why, why look at the way it's made. Somebody made this. <laughs> I thought it was a fungus growth that attached itself to the box. <laughs> I'll explain the statue to you. It's symbolic, and it represents the human struggle. Uh, this white lump is a woman kneeling with her hands outstretched. The three globe-like objects in front of it represent the phases of a person's existence, infancy, adolescence, and maturity. And they're all groping for the staff of life. Is that what that is? Mm. <laughs> Looks like three bald-headed hobos fighting over a cigar butt. <laughs> See the scars on that one fella's knuckles. <laughs> say, Willie, didn't you say this was breakable? Oh, yes, yes. Well, don't stand there. Break it. <laughs> I, I don't understand you. You never like the gifts I give you. Fine gifts. Last year, you gave me a mahjong set, and for Christmas, you gave me a squash racket. Well, I thought you'd enjoy the squash racket, but you never even used it. I did, too. I tried eating squash with it. <laughs> Stuff kept leaking through the hole. Now, Philip, I, I, I know that if, if you study this statue, you'll get accustomed to it, and you'll just learn to love it. It's no use, Willie. Every time I look at it, I get sick at my stomach. I felt the same way when I first saw you, but I gave you a chance. <laughs> now, look, Philip, I have a friend who's an art dealer. I'll have him come over and point out the fine artistry of this work. Now, I'll go in and call him right Don't now. Don't bother about it, Willie. Don't mind calling him. I... Alice, where does your brother find these things? Oh, Willie means well. I, I hope you're not angry with him for getting you this. No, no, no. Just to show him that there's no hard feelings, this year I'll buy my brownie cookies from him. <laughs> oh, Phil, you shouldn't laugh at Willie just because he thinks differently than you do. Don't forget, other people have been laughed at. Like who and what key are you singing it in? <laughs> They all laughed at Christopher Columbus when he said the world was round. They all laughed when Edison recorded sound. They all laughed at Wilbur and his brother when they said that man could fly. They told Marconi wireless was a phony. It's the same old cry. They laughed at me, wanting you. Said I was reaching. For the moon, but ooh, you came through. Now they'll have to change their tune. They'll change their tune. They all said we never could be happy. They laughed at us and how. But ho, 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 who's got the last laugh now? They all laughed at Rockefeller Center. Now they're fighting to get in. They all laughed at Whitney and his cotton gin. They all laughed at Fulton and his steamboat, Hershey and his chocolate bar. Ford and his Lizzie kept the laughers busy, that's how people are. They laughed at me, wanting you, said it would be hello, goodbye. But ooh, you came through, now they're eating humble pie. They all said we'd never get together, darling, let's take a bow. Ford, ho, ho, ho. Who's got the last laugh? I've got the last laugh. We've got the last laugh now. Alice, how can I get rid of Willie's present without hurting his feelings? Oh, Phil, you're not being very gracious. At least Willie remembered your birthday. That's more than Frankie did. He didn't call or send a card or well, anything. Well, he's not the type... I'll get that. Come to think of it, Alice is right. You'd think my best friend would remember that at least it was... Hiya, Curly. Happy birthday. Frank. 
You remember. Oh, how'd you know it was my birthday? I got your telegram this morning reminding me. <laughs> I got a present for you, too. Ah, oh, Frankie, now don't tell to... me I didn't have to buy anything, because you told me that last year, and when I didn't, you laid me off for two weeks. <laughs> It was only one week, and what have you got me? Well, I didn't want to spend a lot on something you couldn't use, so I'm giving you the money instead. Here. Gee, Frankie. A three-dollar bill. <laughs> I've never seen one of these. They're very rare. <laughs> a friend of mine makes them to order. That's a novelty. Custom-made money. Did you get any other unusual birthday presents, Curly? Yes, yes, I got one from Willie. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Willie brought me one. Come on in, I'll show it to you. All right. Hey, will you see what that dove laid on me? <laughs> Oh, Philip, my friend will be over soon. Oh, hello, Francis. Hi, Willie. Curly was just going to show me the present you bought him. Oh, wait till you see it. Philip doesn't seem to appreciate it, but I know you'll be thrilled. Well, there it is. There what is? <laughs> right there in the center of the table. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> How did he get hurt? <laughs> It's a modernistic statue. Isn't it beautiful? Look at those graceful lines. Oh, it's symmetry. Where'd you dig this up, son? <laughs> what did you say? He wants to know what cemetery you dug it up. <laughs> Francis, I'm surprised at you. Don't you understand the, the symbolism of this impressionistic piece? Doesn't the female form and the three globular objects represent something to you? Oh, of course. Now I see it. That's a dame leaning over a pool table making a three-cushion billiard shot. <laughs> oh, never mind. We'll just have to wait until my aunt dealer friend gets here and explains it. Hey, Curly, you ain't gonna keep this thing in the house, are you? Of course not. I'm gonna carry it outside and bury it. Come on. Yeah. And the quicker I get this off of my hand, the quicker just that I'll... Just a minute, Phil. Where are you going with that set? I'm getting rid of this monstrosity. Oh, no, you don't. It's a gift, and you're going to keep it. Besides, it's not a monstrosity. The more I look at it, the more I like it. In fact, I understand it now. <laughs> this kid's been sipping hot muscatel. <laughs> Close, right? I am not. <laughs> now, Phil, you give me that satchel. Thanks. Now, I'll hold it over here in the corner, and you look at it from a distance. Notice the pure whiteness of it, the rounded lines, and the way it... I'm it... doing the groceries, and... Miss Faye, why are you standing in the corner holding that bag of dirty laundry? <laughs> Julius, this is not dirty laundry. It's Mr. Harris's statue. What do you think of it? It's a very good likeness of it. <laughs> Julius, you study art in school. Can you tell me what this represents? Let me see. It looks like a human form on its knees, but the tree globes above it from... Oh, of course. Now I know what it is. What? Mr. Remley in a pawn shop begging for more money. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Frankie. Look, kid. Although this statue is very dear to me, I believe in sharing my joy with my fellow man. In short, I'm giving you this statue to show how I feel about you. Thank you very much. I hate you, too. <laughs> what am I going to do with a sloppy mess? That's your problem. Get it out of here. Right this way, Harry. The statue's in here. Folks, I, I want you all to meet Mr. Daniels, the art dealer. How do you do? Hello, Mr. Daniels. Hi, Dan. There's the statue. <laughs> right there on the table. What do you think of it? Well, let me see. Hmm. Ooh. This technique looks familiar. 
Why, George, this was done by the modern Greek master, Clytonophonus. <laughs> Not the Crokinolicus. <laughs> Clytonophonus. Hey, did you hear that, Ram? This thing's a genuine Clyde. <laughs> This is quite a valuable piece of art. I'm willing to pay $1,500 for it. Who owns it? I bought it. It's my present. But I'm holding it. <laughs> Just a minute, mister. I'm not going to let these two guys cheat Curly out of $1,500. bucks. mister Remley, who does this statue belong to? Me. <laughs> I can settle this. I have the bill of sale, and that proves I'm the legal owner. But I'm not selling it to you, Harry. I can get more for it at a public auction. Oh, very well. But do me a favor. I'm having an auction at my place tonight. Put it up there so I can bid on it. Fair enough. Well, I'll see you tonight, then. Goodbye, everybody. I'm Hi, getting Dad. out of here, too. You're nothing but a bunch of Indian statue givers. <laughs> I'll leave with you, Julius. There's one thing I can't stand. It's a crude exhibition of money grabbing that I can't get in on. <laughs> well. William, I'm surprised at you. Giving a gift to Phil and then taking it back because it's worth a lot of money. Shame on you. And fie on you, too. <laughs> I hope your next upside-down cake comes out right side up. Alice, <laughs> well, I guess you're right. I was overcome by greed, and that's not like me. Philip, you may have the statue, and whatever you get for it at the auction, you may keep. Ah, oh, gee, really. More like you. That's swelling, kid. You're really a nice little guy, and I want you to Philip, know... Philip, stop that... patting me on the head. You're hitting my soft spot. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, you just did me a big favor, so I'm going to do you an even bigger favor. You're going to give me the statue? No, I'm going to sing to you. This is a favor? <laughs> <laughs> Morning, out on the job, work like the devil for my pay. But that lucky old son got nothing to do but rule around heaven all day. Show me that river, take me across. Wash all my troubles away Like that lucky old son Give me nothing to do But rule around heaven all day Lord, can't you know he's crying Tears all in his eyes Send us Back on my job, work like the devil for my pay. While that lucky old son got nothing to do but rule around heaven all day. Fuss with my woman, toil for my kids, sweat till I'm wrinkled. But that lucky old son, he ain't got nothing to do but rule around heaven all day. Good Lord above, can't you know I'm pining? Tears all in my eyes. Send down. With a silver lining, lift me to paradise. Do me that river, take me across, wash all my troubles away. Like that lucky old son, 
Give me nothing to do But roll around heaven all Because we can do Mr. Harris a favor. Willie took advantage of him, and... Well, you know how Mr. Harris is. He's a babe in the woods. I know he is, but what's that got to do with it? <laughs> well, being a babe in the woods... He... Oh, babe in the woods. I thought you said aged in the woods. <laughs> Well, Willie owns the statue, and when he has it auctioned off, it's up to us to see he doesn't get much for it. We lost up the bid, huh? That's right. All we have to do hey, is... Hey, Remley! Ah, oh, good. You got Julius with you, huh? Yeah. Hey, I want you two guys to do me a favor. See, I'm auctioning off this statue. You don't have I'm... to tell us what to do, Curly. Huh? That's why we're here. To help you. <laughs> we got it all figured out, Mr. Harris. You just start the auction and leave the rest to us. Ah, oh, swell. Okay, thanks, fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to offer for auction this beautiful piece of statuary. Is that the statue you were telling me about, Harry? That's the one. It's worth 2000 Easy. 2000 You guys is a couple of pikers. That statue's worth 10000 of anybody's money. Glad to hear you feel that way about it, son. <clears throat> now, gentlemen, let's start the bidding. What am I offered? Thirty-five sold to Mr. Harris for dollar thirty-five. Wait a minute, Grandpa. <laughs> Come here. What are you trying to do? We're helping. Well, you. if you want to help, start with one thousand and stick to it. But Curly, don't you... argue. Just do as I tell you now. All right, now, gentlemen, I'm ready to hear your offers. What am I bid for this beautiful statue? Two thousand dollars. Three thousand. One thousand. <laughs> Nice going, Frankie. You're going in the wrong direction, but nice going. <laughs> no wonder you didn't bid 500. 500! Two Christmas! <laughs> How did we get back to that? It seems to me I heard somebody offer 3,000. I did. 3,000! 4,000! 1,000! 5,000! 6,000! 1,035! Hey, son, come over here and bring your friend, the one with the baggy pants face. Well, Curly, we doing a good job of ruining Willie's sale? Willie's sale? Frankie, Willie gave the statue back to me. It's my sale. Don't you oh. understand? Now, I'll tell you what. If you and Julius bid it up high enough, I'll split it with you. Oh, okay. All right. Now, gentlemen, what was the last bid? I bid 6000 7000 3 million. <laughs> Thousand to three million? <laughs> I could have sworn there was some numbers in between. <laughs> Harris, eight thousand is my last offer. Take it or leave it. Do I hear more? Eight thousand once, eight thousand twice, sold for eight thousand. <laughs> No, no, eight thousand dollars smashed to pieces. Now I won't get a nickel for it. Julius. This is all your fault. This wouldn't have happened if you didn't start off with that ridiculous thirty-five cent bid. That ain't what I bid. What did you bid? A dollar thirty-five. Go to the boy with a slow leak in his head. <laughs> Ah, 
Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But first, here's your Rexall family druggist. Whenever a customer asks me if Rexall aspirin is the fastest dissolving aspirin you can buy, I tell them no. It's the fastest disintegrating. Oh, why? What's the difference? A great deal, ma'am. You see, aspirin itself, any aspirin, is almost insoluble in water. And it's also too fine to hold together in tablet form. So a way had to be found to bind it with an ingredient that would quickly disintegrate. That is, break up the tablet. So the aspirin itself would immediately be free to do its job. I see. The quicker the breakup, the quicker the let up. Exactly, ma'am. And that's why Rexall scientists developed a binder so low in moisture content that it expands and pulls apart the very second it comes in contact with water, completely freeing the five full grains of aspirin in every Rexall aspirin tablet and allowing them to go to work for you even while you're swallowing the tablet. Oh, I'd say that's about as fast as you can get it. And you'd be absolutely correct. By laboratory test, Rexall aspirin disintegrates faster than any other leading brand tested. And that's the kind of quality we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. There's a friend of yours here to see you. Hello, Phil. Well, if it ain't Bob McLaughlin, one of Hollywood's leading disc jockeys. <laughs> hey, Bob. Yeah. Hey, what's on your mind, Robert? Well, I have some great news for you, Phil. As a result of reports from my Rexall record shows all over America and my fellow disc jockeys, your victory recording of the old master painter, with music arranged by Walter Scharf, places you on top of the list as America's newest male vocal sensation. <laughs> Julius, keep out of there! <laughs> and Phil, this scroll is our way of saying thank you, and we hope that you'll bring us another victor in a song real soon. Ah, thank you, Bob McLaughlin. And incidentally, ladies and gentlemen, Bob McLaughlin has done over 350... 15-minute programs all over the country for Rexall. And Bob, to you and all the disc jockeys all over America for this vote of confidence, I want to thank you. And also to our listeners for accepting this song from Filsey. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. This program is produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast was John Stevenson. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Why cough your head off these winter days when there's such soothing relief with Cherisote, Rexall's popular cough remedy? Ruby red and pleasant tasting, Cherisote does double duty, soothing the raw and irritated membranes of your throat and bronchial tubes and helping to loosen your cough. See your doctor about any cough that hangs on. Ask for Cherisote wherever you see the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Stay tuned for Sam Spade, then Theater Guild with Jane Wyman on NBC. NBC.